Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite composers, and one that introduced me to so much, new soundscapes and new compositional techniques that I never imagined were possible. In fact, he really provided the compositional education that was missing from the classes that I was taking. This composer teaches every listener about the many unimaginable possibilities in sound that there are. This composer is so good that every person I have ever shown his music to has absolutely enjoyed it. If you love atonal and modern music, you'll love him. If you love a, uh, tonal and beautiful music, you'll love him. If you want uh, electronics in your music, he's got it. If you like film scores, he's got some of those too. So who is it? Well, of course, it's the amazing Erkis Ventura. I think most music professors and critics would say that the greatest composer is actually someone that is not currently alive. You know, names like Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, Mahler, etc., etc. Ironically, living composers seem to hardly ever get the respect or acclaim that they deserve, with most of it going to composers that have died a long time ago. Regardless of what the critics may say, I contend that Tur is one of the greatest composers, if not the greatest composer to date. And if you think I'm totally wrong, or if Tur is just simply a new name to you, well, stick with me on this video. We're going to find out a little bit more about him and take a look at some of the pieces that really changed my mind about uh, who my favorite composer is and uh, just really opened my eyes to the incredible uh, amount of work he has done. So I discovered Tur's music in a very interesting way. I was about to take the last few courses I needed to complete my composition major at Berkeley. And these were composing for full orchestra. Well, up until that point, I was, had really disliked orchestral music. Actually, I hadn't heard any of it that I really liked. I much preferred small chamber pieces. Maybe a string quartet, quintet, uh, trios, you know, I just liked smaller configurations and the orchestra didn't do it for me. So I started searching for every and any orchestral piece that I might like. Something to just help me get through these classes and motivate me to write my own orchestral piece. Maybe there'd be something in these uh, pieces that spoke to me and give me a little inspiration to keep going. Well, I turned to my trusty ECM catalog and searched through that and discovered this album right here. Uh, Symphony Number no. 6 from Erky Sven Tour. And that was where I started. As soon as I heard the downbeat, I was instantly hooked. I thought for sure that this was an orchestra with live electronics. As the sounds I was hearing were unlike any I had heard ever before. I was able to get a copy of the score, and I was amazed to see that there were no electronics involved, actually. It was just Tour's mastery of instrument blending. It was so great that he was able to create entirely new sounds from knowing exactly which instruments to combine. Let's take a listen to that first sound that I heard so you see what I mean. So see, that was just incredible, and wait until you hear the entire piece. For me, it completely changed what I thought of symphonic music and orchestral music. From that point on, I had to go, as I do with any new, uh, newly discovered music that I like, I just had to go out and uh, look up the rest of his output. His ECM catalog is both extensive and incredible. The next release I discovered chronologically uh, was actually his first ECM release, and that is uh, this album right here, uh, Crystal Esatio. On that album is an incredible track titled Illusion, in which he works with the Baroque motif. I think a piece like this in its original context, Baroque style context, I wouldn't have maybe enjoyed exactly, but after Tour's treatment, it is captivating like none other. I have absolutely listened to this piece thousands of times at this point. So now he's made me love two things that I didn't before hearing his work, symphonies and Baroque music. What else can he make me like? Well, probably anything he does, but uh, throughout his many compositions and recordings, I have learned a great deal and come to appreciate many new components of classical music that I didn't enjoy before. For example, the use of orchestral percussion. So how did Tour achieve all of this amazing music? And even more importantly, how did he create something so captivating that it changed my tastes and opinions in classical music? 
but it's actually not so hard to figure that out after we take a look at his background. It will really shed some light on the sounds that he's getting now. In 1979, he founded a prog rock band titled In Spade, and around the same time, he was going to conservatory where he was studying flute, orchestral percussion, and composition. I read that he mentioned he was interested in getting some of the timbres from rock music into orchestration. He made clear, though, to differentiate that he's not trying to orchestrate rock music, but rather to orchestrate the specific timbres from it, such as distortion or electric guitars, etc., etc. This really explains some of the sounds we were hearing in the Sixth Symphony that we mentioned. Furthermore, back to this album, Strata, uh, the, in the liner notes, which I recommend reading the liner notes to all of his ECM albums because they're very thorough and wonderful. But on the liner notes to this one, uh, Steve Lake points out that Tour brings a refreshing, unencumbered approach to composition. Later in that interview, with late tour describes two schools kind of of modern composers one being rather tonal and uh, the other being based on theories along the lines of serialism and that his music tries to bridge them he pointed out that it's not trying to combine them it's just trying to bridge that so you listen to you have maybe some elements of he also includes a lot of minimalism at times so you have elements of minimalism tonality and then that's kind of being like a, almost like an invitation, like you're inviting uh, listeners of that to come listen to the atonal music. This is a purely genius, in my opinion, and it's something that actually was a, a topic in some of my Berkeley classes about how to get an audience that doesn't like atonal or modern music, how to get them, kind of invite them, you know, work their way into this type of music because you can't just dump it all on them and say, enjoy this, because they won't. You have to figure out how to gradually get them interested in it. And as you know, as uh, we've talked in my previous videos, that's something I'm very passionate about, is helping people discover some of this more uh, sometimes inaccessible music. And you also know that I really love both atonal and modern music, as well as traditional bluegrass or folk music, which is definitely quite tonal. So of course, of course, Tyr is going to speak to me. He's doing exactly what my brain wants. I love it. He's doing so uh, incredible, such incredible music. And of course, it really speaks to me. Tyr is now an award-winning composer and was so successful in composition that he was able to give up his teaching job at the conservatory and become a full-time composer. This is the all-time dream of almost every composer, and it is awarded to very, very few. But I think Tour's music speaks for itself. He has nine symphonies already, many concerti, an opera, choral works, chamber works, a, a film score, and much, much more. Take a listen to his uh, arrangement on this ECM release. He has two pieces on here that are his own, but he also has an arrangement of a piece of music by uh, Just Waldo. And if you have any doubts about my high praise of Tour, just take a listen to that, and I think that will absolutely change your mind. Before we end, I want to mention two more albums of Tour's music. Being a string player, I'm often drawn to string quartets the most, and Tour's first string quartet is so good. There is an incredible motif that starts it, and if you have not heard it yet, I won't spoil it and explain it. You should go listen to it as soon as this video is over and hear this fun motif for yourself. The album came out in 1993, so it's been a little bit. Now this year, in 2020, ECM has given us the long-awaited follow-up, a new album titled Lost Prayers, which gives us a second string quartet. It's breathtakingly new, but also has some refreshing elements of familiarity to it. It feels so great to hear another string quartet from Tour after all these years. It's like a homecoming, basically. And I would have it here with me. Uh, maybe there's more I can learn from the liner notes of that, but it is not available in the U.S. right now, but you can still stream it, and it is incredible. I did read a comment about the album in which uh, this is his first album of entirely chamber pieces, and he was hoping to show and convey that chamber music, smaller ensembles can be uh, every bit as expressive as large orchestras, and I think he proved it on this album. As always, thank you so much for joining in this discussion today. If you enjoyed it and would like to have more composer overviews in the future, let me know because I have a few more composers in mind that I'd like to share with you. So if it's interesting, we will do more of those. 
Which compositions by Tour did you enjoy? Uh, do you have some favorites? Which of his are your favorites? Please let us know in the comments. I'd like to know, and maybe some people watching will find some new favorites based on other people sharing. So let's keep the music sharing. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.